today we are going to be building a commander deck for one of my all-time favorite absolutely terrible terrible commanders daughter of autumn from homelands daughter of autumn is a two four for two colorless and two green that reads pay white and redirect to daughter of autumn one damage dealt to a white creature so i decided to build daughter of autumn as a lightning rod i don't even know if this is a commander archetype necessarily maybe we're inventing it right now but that ability printed on daughter of autumn lets us redirect damage to her from anywhere on the table that includes our opponent's creatures that are white creatures Normally, this is something you don't want to do, but in this instance, our challenge is going to be how can we make this good and fun? And I think I've come up with something that does just that. So to take the most advantage of our commander's ability, we're going to be running cards that manipulate the color of other permanents on the board. No card that I'm aware of does that better than Painter's Servant, which is a two cost, one three. Painter's Servant comes into play and you choose a color. All cards that aren't in play, all spells and all permanents are the chosen color in addition to their other colors. So this is wonderful, it'll make all the creatures on the board white so we can target them with Daughter of Autumn's ability and redirect damage. Painter Servant, however, is pricey. It's about $60, $63 last time I checked because it was not reprinted very often. A great budget alternative is Distorting Lens. We tap it, target permanent becomes the color of your choice until the end of turn. This is a perfectly acceptable substitute. We're only going to likely be targeting one creature at a time with Daughter of Autumn's ability. It's also 25 cents. Eight and a half tails is a creature that has a very useful color fixing effect. For one colorless, we can target a spell or permanent and turn it white until the end of turn. And eight and a half tails also lets us target a permanent we control and give it protection from white until the end of turn. It's gonna let us pillow fort a little bit and it synergizes very well with our commander. So in light of all the damage that we're gonna be redirecting to Daughter of Autumn, it's gonna be important that she can live through it. So we're gonna run enchantments like Indestructibility, which will give any permanent we control indestructible. Dark Steel Plate, another way to give our commander indestructible. And then Standard Bearer. Standard Bearer is a one colors and one white, one one flag bearer that reads if an opponent plays a spell or ability that could target a flag bearer in play, that player chooses at least one flag bearer as a target. I have personally never seen this card come down in a commander game, but the moment I saw it, its applications and its utility are absolutely crazy. If an opponent, for example, is, is putting down a gift of immortality on their commander, they have to target this flag bearer with that spell instead. Imagine my delight then when I found this card, Coalition Flag, that does the same thing but puts it on our commander. Coalition Flag is a one white enchantment that gives our commander the same ability. So if we have Coalition Flag on our indestructible commander, she essentially becomes the most effective lightning rod that I've ever seen, and I think it's really fun interaction there. Coalition Honor Guard is another one that'll do this. So we have a few of these creatures and effects that are going to disrupt how our opponents play and how their spells resolve, and I think that is a ton of fun. Because we're going to be redirecting so much damage and these unexpected effects, Sigil of New Dawn is an excellent enchantment to run. Sigil of New Dawn allows us to essentially pay one colorless and a white whenever one of our creatures would be put into our graveyard from the battlefield, and if we do that, we can return the creature to our hand. Druid's Call, very, very fun, especially with Coalition Flag on the commander. Whenever Enchanted Creature is dealt damage, its controller puts that many 1-1 green squirrel creature tokens into play. This is fantastic. Every damage that we direct to Daughter of Autumn is going to get us a squirrel. Rite of Passage lets us put a plus one, plus one counter on our creatures whenever they are dealt damage, specifically Daughter of Autumn. This can help her grow to absolutely gigantic proportions if she is left alone, and it's just a hilarious interaction to watch unfold at the table. Now, Daughter of Autumn is a very flavor-heavy card for me. I do get sort of a creepy vibe from Daughter of Autumn as well. Just that expression on her face and that bizarre pose that she has makes you wonder if you zoomed out a little bit more on her frame, would there be a dead body or something? I'm not sure. But in any case, all those questions I have lead me to want to run cards like Creepy Doll with her as well. Creepy Doll is a five cost, one one indestructible creature. Whenever Creepy Doll deals combat damage to a creature, flip a coin. If you win the flip, that creature is destroyed. Of course, you had to know I'm going to run Stuffy Doll in this deck as well. I imagine this card in Daughter of Autumn's room somewhere with pins in it for, you know, every arranged marriage that fell through. Stuffy Doll is a 5 cost, 0 1, also indestructible. And when it comes in, we choose a player. Whenever Stuffy Doll is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to the chosen player. We can tap Stuffy Doll to deal 1 damage to itself. 
It's a fantastic card as well to run with things like Channel Harm. This is a six cost instant spell. It says we prevent all damage that would be dealt to us and permanents that we control this turn by sources we don't control. If damage is prevented this way, we can have Channel Harm deal that much damage to target creature. Let's say for example that we have Stuffy Doll and we're about to take <laughs> I don't know, 40 or more damage from incoming green trampling horde. Then we turn around and play something like Channel Harm, which is going to absorb that 40 some damage we're taking from the Stampede, direct it all at Stuffy Doll, and then whatever player Stuffy Doll has named is suddenly going to have 40 plus damage coming at him or her. In this creepy dollhouse theme, we'll also run cards like Dollhouse of Horrors. This is a five cost artifact we can tap one and exile a creature from our graveyard. We create a token that's a copy of the exiled card, but it's a zero zero construct artifact in addition to its other types. And it has this creature gets plus one plus one for each construct you control. It gains haste until the end of turn and we can activate this only as a sorcery. So we run Dollhouse of Horrors because of course the flavor, but it's also gonna be very practical for us to be bringing back copies of creatures that are in our graveyard because we are going to be doing so much to mess with how damage happens on the board, especially with those flag bearer cards, that we're likely going to end up having a fair number of our creatures hit the yard. Dollhouse of Horrors is going to be a really fun way to get them back, and man that artwork is just fantastically creepy in there. I don't know if you noticed, but there's an eyeball, a gigantic eyeball at the window. I think this is incredibly on flavor. It gives me just enough of the creeps as looking at Daughter of Autumn does for too long. Another tribe I'm going to be running alongside dolls in this deck is Unicorns. Unicorns fit perfectly with Daughter of Autumn, at least to my mind. Cards like Blessed Sanctuary. Blessed Sanctuary is a 5 cost enchantment. It says prevent all non-combat damage that would be dealt to you and creatures you control and whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under our control we make a 2-2 white unicorn creature token unicorns don't get enough play in magic i don't think and i want to correct that also going to be running benevolent unicorn this is a two cost one two unicorn whenever a spell assigns damage to a creature or player that damage is reduced by one hey that's excellent it's on flavor with us and it also has a very useful damage reduction ability that is going to synergize with our commander. Capetian Unicorn, another great unicorn. <laughs> Capetian Unicorn, another great unicorn in the tribe is a two cost one two. We can pay to tap and sacrifice Capetian Unicorn to destroy target artifact or enchantment. Amelia the Blessed is a four four unicorn that for three will let us flicker a permanent that we control. And whenever another creature enters the battlefield under our control, we can pay white or green. And if we do, we put a plus one plus one counter on it. If it happens to be a unicorn, we will put two plus one plus one counters on it. I'm gonna be running Noble Quarry as well. All creatures able to block Noble Quarry or the creature it's enchanting do so. I'm likely not the first person to run Noble Quarry alongside Stuffy Doll, but I had to do this just for the laughs. It is going to be so much fun to swing that doll at an opponent who has to block it with everything they have. And then Stuffy Doll essentially will explode for an insane amount of damage if the opponent has a lot of blockers up. So what is Daughter of Autumn's endgame? I think a very fun way to do that is gonna be with cards like Nylia's Colossus. Nylia's Colossus is a seven cost, six, six, and has constellation. Whenever Nylia's Colossus or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, double target creature's power and toughness until the end of turn. So due to the sheer amount of enchantments that we run, this is gonna be a very fun way to close out the game. This gives us the option of commander damage as a way to win the game. Teladar Sovereign is a six cost, four, six, with vigilance and lifelink that reads, at the beginning of your upkeep, if you have 40 or more life, you win the game. That's going to be a fairly easy threshold for us to cross due to the fact that we are going to be able to resist a lot of the damage coming at us and we're going to be gaining life throughout the game. And lastly, there is the tried and true method of overwhelming stampede in green, a common victory condition, but one that I think is made more interesting and fun by the types of creatures that we would be using it on. This would be going on an army of our dolls and unicorns. It can be a one player or two or multiple player delete button in and of itself if we have the board state set up. So that's it for Daughter of Autumn. I had an absolute blast putting this deck list together. As always, please remember to wear your seatbelt, and if there is voting near you, please remember to do that.